time welcome to another video and today i'm going to show you how to remove the pre-travel in a gpro wireless for both mains and side switches there's a few techniques i'm going to show you here that i've been doing so stick around and we'll show you how to do that now you can see here this gpro wireless straight out of the box has got some pretty bad pre-travel you can tell by how much movement's in the switch before it clicks there's also a little bit on the switch itself in general just to have actuation but this is way too much I'm going to show you how to tweak that with a few different tricks. You can pick and choose which one works for you. There's some easy ones, there's some more advanced ones. I'm just going to show you how to really improve it. So you can see after the mod, what the different actuation is. It's going to take a little bit of time for you to perfect this and just work through it. This is what we're going to be doing today. This is the end result now on the main left and right switch. And you're going to get some pretty good improvements. You're going to make it really nice and clicky and really responsive when you're gaming. And that's one of the issues a lot of people complain about when you're at the more competitive level is the pre and post travel. Post is a little bit more trickier to match and I won't be doing a video today on that. That's when these goes past the switch. Actuation continues. So if you're not familiar with my channel, I'll give the data and statistics and modifications to give you the competitive edge over your gaming rivals. So make sure you like and subscribe to make sure you get the latest information to be the first one to put it to good use. Now we've done a lot of stuff on the G Pro Wireless and this is more of the advanced stuff. You need to take this apart. I'm going to show you how to take it apart in this video and I've also done several teardowns. This will work on any G Pro Superlight, any G Pro. You could also use this technique on other mice as well. It's not specifically for the G Pro, although the side switches on this are. Now I'm going to be using a lighter fluid technique with a splunger here to remove these skates. I've done a video on how to remove skates and other methods as well if you don't have this to make sure you don't damage them. These Logitech skates don't come apart too easily, so you might damage them. I'd recommend replacing them and if you need to, I've got a website that sells replacement skates for it, as well as many videos on my channel comparing which skates are best for which mice. So we're checking those out as well. Now to do is you have to take your mouse apart. In this case, it's a super light G Pro wireless and there's quite a lot of screws to it. So make sure you either catalog them. I've done many videos or you can follow this one to understand where they all go back. So none of these mods today will do any permanent damage to your Logitech G Pro wireless super light. These are all reversible if you need to and you need to retweak it. we am using some tape, some little bending techniques and generally tighten up the screws as well. You'll see that the G-Pro Wireless Superlight here has some pre-travel on the side buttons. This is what creates the mushy feel. It also does it on the G-Pro itself. It's a little bit unique to the G-Pro, so you won't find this on other mice. And there's a few techniques to get around this. I'm going to show you an easier one first, which is to tighten up the screws a little bit. Now be careful you don't over tighten them because this is plastic, you will strip them. But you can tighten them sometimes a little bit loose. And what you do is when you tighten them and it pulls in the sides and that allows the pre-travel here to tighten up. That's one of the easiest fixes I've found. And some of this time, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on your G Pro and how much pre travel you have. This one's got quite a lot, which is why I'm showing you this mouse. This is quite a lot of pre travel here on this G Pro Super Light. What I'm going to show you now is another trick where you bend the side buttons, but very carefully not to snap them. They're not as brittle as you'd expect, and this bending them gets them to be a little bit closer to the switch. Over time, they may start to move away a little bit, but you can just re-bend them again. Now, the reason why I don't use tape here at this point in time is that tape, for me, can move. I'm not finding it to be the best mod. I'd rather bend them or adjust the button before I do that. I use tape in this video at the end as a last resort. But I'd get, try and get around doing that if you can. It's much better just to do some of these tricks first before you have to actually use tape. Some mice you can't do that. Some mice you have to go straight to tape. Some mice you don't. The G Pro Super Light here you don't need to. Or the G Pro itself you can actually get around it.
and you'll see here again on the side buttons after and then there's some more slight improvement on the pre-travel but we've still got some more tips here don't finish off yet we've got a few other ideas that you can get away with depending on your mouse depending on how you want to do the modification yourself this is all about feel it's quite hard to see it i'm showing you here really close up so you can see it but you'll be able to feel it when you're actually using it yourself it's not so easy to show it on camera but i've done this video to hopefully help you do that let me know in the comments what other videos you want to see and i'll show you some other tricks if you're not familiar i stream on a friday I also stream during the week doing modifications on Wednesday at the moment. I'm more different mice, but in the week I do some of the commissions that I'm doing for people, showing you what modifications they're having. And it's also good if you want to see what modifications you want to make to your own mice yourself. Now we're going to take the ribbon cable off here. Be very careful with this. This is probably one of the riskier sides of the mod. These ribbon cables are not replaceable and they are extra fragile. So be warned if you do this one, you could damage your switches. I don't do this if you're confident. I wouldn't do this if you want to risk your g pro because you can't get replacements now this one i found to be one of the better ways if you've got a real amount of pre-travel this is certainly the better way again it beats putting tape on the actual plungers themselves putting it across the back of this pcb ribbon here allows you to get more of an even spread and also it's more permanent the tape doesn't move around like it can do on the buttons especially if you've got some lateral movement on the buttons that can knock off the tape and then you have to go back and do it yourself again which can be a little bit awkward So I've got some 3M tape here, this is double sided, I use it quite a lot if you've seen in my videos and all the links to my tools and stuff are in the description, we had to get some results, this stuff's quite hard to get hold of, I'm going to cut this to shape around the back of this ribbon cable and these side buttons and then we're going to stick it back on, it'll give it surprisingly a little bit more depth and that'll remove some more of the pre-travel, although it looks very minor, you're going to be surprised how much this does improve it when you do it yourself, like I say this is quite an even spread of the adjustment as well which is probably my preference. I pick this one over Mailar tape or something like that if the other two tricks don't work. As we said, you could change the switches here. That won't necessarily affect the pre-travel. It will more affect the click and the failure rate of the switch. But it's more around the feeling. You're still going to have to do some of these pre-travel and post-travel mods if you find you're at quite a lot. Now, I don't clean off any of the other stickiness. That's because I want to leave it on there to keep that additional distance. And this bit here is going to make it basically push out slightly more it's so subtle you won't even see it again you can only feel it and then what we'll try again now is put the switches on and then i'll show you the method now with mail our tape after this but we will remove the piece of tape that i've put on here which you won't see me do but it has been taken off to show you two different techniques and then we'll get on to the main That's the tape on now, it looks stock, you can't even tell. Put the side buttons on, this puppy is gonna feel sweet. Again, you can use the screws to alter the actuation or the pre-travel. What you gotta be careful of is not getting the switch too close to the plunger, which basically deadens the switch. And you'll tell that there's no spring back. There's always gonna be a little bit of pre-travel, it depends on the switch plunger itself as well, which you'll see. There's always gonna be a little bit of a play. If you do have it too flat, you literally, will, it'll just feel dead the switch though. If you do that, back it off or take off a bit of tape or bend it slightly over the way a little bit. These are very subtle bends, by the way, they're not massive either, but you'll be able to tell once you overdo it that the switch is not quite feeling right. Again, reversible, no problem, just back it off, you won't damage it, no problemo. Look how much tighter they are. The right hand one or the back one is too tight. So I'm just going to back the screw off, like I was saying. It's basically lacking any spring. 
And then now I can feel it again. And look how close those are. They are very nice. Very nice. All about finding that fine adjustment. It's going to come down to what you want personally to feel. When I mod these for people, I set them up to what my preferences. It's difficult for someone to tell you exactly what they want. They just have to try and feel it themselves. I like them to be on the switch so they're super quick. Much quicker to build or whatever you're doing in Fortnite or side buttons I use for grenades and secondary weapons, things like that. So look how tight they are. They are right on top of the switch. Instant actuation. So now we're going to take the side switches off again. I've removed the side tape from it. Now we're going to go with Maillard tape, which is what a lot of other people use, more of a common method. It does work. I just think there's some better options. We're going to use some aluminium Maillard tape. Again, I'll put some links in my tools. So check out the description if you want to get some. There's different thicknesses of this tape. I'd try and get the thinnest tape you can. That way you can make the more micro adjustments that you need. And that way it gives you more flexibility when you want to change things or when you want to get really, really fine with your pre travel so it's single-sided at the mail it's not double-sided tape. There's black tape, this is aluminium, which I find to be slightly better. And this stuff is very sticky. You have to keep adding different bits of tape layer on here. So the first initial part, two bits of tape are fine. When you start adding three bits, four bits, five bits, you've got a lot of pre-travel there. And the more tape you pile on it, the more chance it has to slip off. So you want to be very careful. That's when you want to start looking at doing bending techniques, which I prefer, which removes most of the pre-travel. And then maybe a little bit of tape at the end just to get that very fine adjustment because it's difficult to bend it to that exact level that you want. It just depends how much time you want to spend on it, but I'd certainly avoid trying to build up a load of Maillard tape. Sometimes you don't have an option, sometimes you have to, depends on the mouse, but if you can, I'd avoid it. You certainly can on the G Pro and G Pro Superlight. My preference also is to use a bit more tape. I won't put it just at the micro level, like just across one bar. Try and put it as much over the switch as you can, over that plunger so that it doesn't move around, that you want as much stickable area as you can. The Super Light 12 has a bit of an issue with Maillard pads moving, and that's because they're quite small. That's because they don't got much surface area to stick if they had larger ones, which they can't do because of the way it's built. But if they did, then it would be much easier and wouldn't slide around as much. Again, you can see how tight they are. You've got to keep working it until you get that right amount of mailer on there. So now let's put that back together and then we're going to do the left and right mains. This is on the stock 20 million Omron. Like I said, you can use different switches. Even if you change the switches, you're still going to have to do this on most of these G Pros. Some of them are okay. Some of them are good. Some of them are pretty bad like this one. Most people wouldn't notice it. It's probably top 5% people that would actually notice this amount of pre-travel. It's quite a fine niche, but this is certainly how to fix it if you have problems.
So for now, I'm just going to hold the bottom of the switch. And you can just see the pre and post travel. It just tied up fractionally with the screw. But I'm just going to test it. This is the quickest way to test it before you have to screw it in and unscrew it. You don't want to keep doing that on these screws because they are plastic and you will strip the thread. So try and unscrew them and screw them as little as you have to. You can see this has got some pretty significant pre travel. So each time I rebend it, I retest it, give it a quick check to see where we're up to. It takes a bit of time to do this. And it's going to come down to your personal preference as well. Like I say the closer you get to the switch, the more you start to deaden it. You might not mind that. Some people don't like it, but you might want less pre-travel. You might just want a bit of a flatter switch. So you get a quicker actuation, but maybe less feel back on the switch click. Now let's try the right one. Again, a lot of pre-travel. It tends to have quite a bit on the very front corner towards the scroll wheel. So try and do these, I would say, just in front of the scroll wheel, but in the middle. That's where the switch tends to be. And that's where you want to make sure you get the actuation right. If you go too far forward, it's going to give it a bit of a false reading. That's because the button, these buttons actually bend a little bit as well. So it can come down also to where you actually press, but that's why I generally press just in front of the scroll wheel or just in line with the very front of it. Now we've done that, you could leave it there if you wish. You could keep alternating that way. I wouldn't do too many flexes up and down. I mean, you'll get away with 20 or so. Just don't overdo it because you will fatigue it and obviously it will snap eventually if you keep doing that because it's plastic. If you're not getting a happy result, then use Maillard tape again. Here's the same stuff we use on the sides. You can put these on the plungers just to help make them a little bit larger. This is some of the difference in tolerances when they're manufacturing it. So we have to try and fold those in because they can't make them too tight because, well, some of them won't work. So unfortunately we have to alter it for them. Now you can put mail on one button and not the other one. You might see some differences in height, you'll have to check. You might feel it in height, it will be very subtle, but if that's the case then you might have to kind of level them out a little bit. Maybe you bend the other button the other way a little bit and then you can add the mail or tape to it, but try and get them level. It just takes a little bit of messing around. It's not the quickest process. This took me probably about half an hour to do. As you can see, keep testing it, resetting it. So it will take you some time. But there's no rush. The same as the side buttons, you can tighten the screws for the buttons to bring them in a little bit. Again, be careful not to strip them. This is the third bit of tape now on this one. This is getting a little bit high. Allows a bit more movement with the tape. But you can use the screws to tighten it to pull it down a little bit. Especially the front one more towards the button. And you can back off the one at the rear. And it kind of like kind of bends it slightly more forward. Again, you just have to play around. It's going to depend totally on your G Pro. We go G Pro X, fourth bit of tape. So this is getting high now. So what I'm going to show you the Maillard tape here. What I would have done personally is I would have bent the button more and then used less tape or tried to get away without using any tape because I don't particularly like it. These buttons do generally move side to side as we know on the G Pro. 
and over time that mail tape will move and it could cause you some issues with the click if it goes under it or doesn't quite do fit right so um, you can always tweak that because you've obviously put it on yourself but just bear that in mind they will move the mail tape over time sometimes especially with lateral movement on the switches on the button sorry so that's it put all that together and then we'll give it a test So hope you like this video. So don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be doing a lot more mods for the GPO. I have it. I've already done loads of mods for the GPO. If you haven't checked out all my playlists, as well as other mods, it's not just the GPO and GPO Superlight. We've been doing it for a long time. We've got quite a collection to get through. So if you're thinking of a mouse, there is plenty. And then let's check it out. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.